What's up guys, we're back here at Chris's house today. We're gonna do a little bit of final work on the CRX before it's actually ready for the road. He ended up getting a new timing belt, water pump kit, we're gonna throw all that on, going with the Gates timing belt. Since they don't make an OEM one anymore, we just decided to go with something a little bit stronger, especially since the car's gonna be pushed. He bought an exhaust for the car. We had initially uh, talked about it and he'd wanted to get an, a Yonaka exhaust, but we're gonna try out, this is one of those eBay exhausts. We paid only $92 shipped for it. And the reason I think he decided on it is that we were talking and I was mentioning that there's a possibility of denting it up at the track. That way while he's still learning and pushing the car harder, there's probably gonna be a few instances where he does go off the track and there's some pretty heavy, heavy drop offs. So we're gonna go with this at first. Um, we're hoping it's not too loud. We have an old test pipe. This is originally off my green SI. And he didn't have one at the time, so we're just gonna use it on his car when, I'll get another one for my car in the future. I wanna put one back onto my SI. But if it's too loud, we're gonna eventually try to maybe re-weld in a vibrant resonator or something that's a little better quality. Or maybe even the muffler section itself where we can just cut and re-weld a different muffler in there. So we're gonna get started on that. And first we're gonna knock out the timing belt and water pump. That way we can get the car up and running. No match for this thing. Isn't that funny? Yeah, thing just came right up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you were thinking of banging on it sometimes? Yeah, I think. I thought it was going to take, it was going to be hard. Right yep, that's good. Just keep going up. And just a little bit more. That should be good. Pull it off all the way. That's good. Then just lift the motor mount up. Can you get around? That should be, that's all we need. We just need to be able to okay. slide the belt in. Right. We're gonna need to take off this right here also. This is a little 14 on both sides of the bracket because uh, that's the only other way we're gonna get the belt in. And then we can put that back on last when we're finished. Did you break it loose? Yeah, that one could be kind of tight sometimes. Short. <laughs> so just kind of like mm, right it up. Put it on like, top you like this. Oh, okay. I see. Yep. You might be able to just pull it now. Pull it here from the side. Yeah, yeah. You just need it off a little bit. <laughs> Sometimes they're on there tight because they may have used a sealant. Uh huh. Do it again. Yeah, let me see it. That's one more. Here. It 
should be good. Wiggle it and pull. There we go. Oh, shit. Go ahead. It's kind of rusty, geez. Yeah. We may want to clean up some of this as well. Yeah, as much as we can with like a screwdriver and a pick. Just clean some of that corrosion out. A little wire. It looks like they use like a sealant. No, they didn't, which is nice. You're not supposed to. It was just hard from years ago. Yeah, it's just probably been uh, stuck on there. It's like most other like radiator hoses and coolant hoses. Can you see that one? You don't want to scratch the actual cam itself. You want to just like, like when you put it in, uh -huh. and then pull away from the the cam. Okay. That way you're just pulling at the the rubber, the rubber seal instead. Like that? Yeah, that's good. There all you right, go, perfect. Right. And then if you want to wipe all that down, and then slide off the inner washer as well. One more. And then we need to pry at that one like we did the upper one. Perfect. Now we got everything off. We're gonna start, start first with the crank and then the cam seal. Then of course we'll do the pump, tensioner, put the spring back on, and then the timing belt last. Oh shit, I push it too far. Can this one still go on? Yeah, yeah, just push the other side, right. see if it evens it out. That's it. That's the wrong way. The pool you're saying? You'll see it, it's right under the water pump. Okay. Tightening, right? Mm hmm. No, loosening. You sit until they're even? They're uh, perpendicular, yeah, they're parallel with the valve cover. This one passed a little then bit. Then just back up in a little bit then. Just back it up. Yeah. Okay.
Okay, see the three little lines right there? There's like one, two, three, and I scratched them off so you can see a little better. They're in yeah. front of my finger. That's for ignition timing. If you go back a little bit, I don't think we can see it on camera. Let me just look. No, we're not going to see it. There's a single one. You see how I lined it up with the mark on the, the cover itself? There's like a little tab. tab, and there's like a middle tab. So you want to line it up there, and when you line it up there, you need to check your cam. So they should be up. You'll see the up on the cam. Uh -huh. And then both these will be flat with the head of the, the valve cover where it lines up. Okay. So it looks good to go. I know, to be honest. Really and if you guys are kind of following along, you'll see the two, there's a dash here and then there's another dash on this side. Those will be at the same height as where the valve cover hits the top of the head. And so now he's just tightening the tensioner. How's that feel? So tight. Okay. The other two are there on top of the battery. Okay. It's like, um... I already forgot. I had about two because it wasn't in Okay, now we're going to attempt to start it. We've got to fill the fluid. Everything's buttoned up. Go and give it a crank. After getting it on the ground for the first time, you can see the obvious uh, errors and like look at the toe on this. It's facing in crazy and that's because we put the compensator arms on, the rear disc brakes, um, and the front as well. Looks like these are facing, facing back. So what we're going to do, we're going to put the exhaust on right now and then we're just going to set the height of the coilovers. We want to get those dialed in to where he wants it and then Essentially after that, it's just time to get the car lined and that'll fix all of these issues Once we can get that car once to get the car driven over to the alignment shop So we're gonna get started on the exhaust real quick
Okay, so I got the rear section on, and that one actually fit very well. It's centered, it's not crooked, as can, in relation to the bumper. So now we just need to get the rest bolted on. He was working on taking off a couple rings on the springs for the exhaust because with that test pipe, we were having a hard time fitting them. It was like too much pressure, so we're gonna try that now and see how that fits. This thing fit really nice, actually. <laughs> Maybe I just have to change out the muffler itself. It's a possibility. Go for it. Just look at that exhaust. It actually fits very well, no issues anywhere. Even with that test pipe, which is the same length as a catalytic converter. So now we're gonna get it started up and hope for the best. You gonna start it? Yeah. Go for it. Okay, so it's a little raspy and a little loud. We're gonna see how it feels when he breaks it in. And here's a look at the exhaust after we finish bolting up everything completely. This particular one fits perfect. The center on the exhaust exit, it's not crooked at all. It's very centered in the car. It's a little bit more on the right side of the plate, the license plate as the left, but it's not, uh, it's not bad at all, especially for only $92 shipped. So if you damage it at the track, it's not gonna be anything we're really gonna have to worry about. We could always replace it. We could replace the muffler or resonator. But honestly, when you're in the car, it sounds a lot quieter than when you're, in, when you're driving it, when you're outside. And it's only the high RPMs where it's a little bit of rattle and drone, but it might actually get a little better as the exhaust is broken in and the fibers inside the exhaust and resonator are broken in. So. We'll see how that sounds after it's been driven for a while. Here's a look at the engine bay all finished up. We left off the cover because we actually had to adjust it. It was off by one tooth. So I ended up moving the cam gear forward one. Runs great now. Um, it's leaking a little bit. I think one of the axle seals I was showing him looks like it's leaking onto the header. So it keeps burning it up. It's creating a little bit of smoke down there. So we're gonna have to address that. But other than that, it actually pulls really strong still for what it is, for what the engine is, that stock A6. And even though the tow and camber is all jacked up, it's not bad the way the car feels when we were driving up down the street right now. And after bleeding the brakes, it was, it was still soft. So we're gonna have to probably just go ahead and redo that again. I don't really have brakes, dude. And we were kind of all over the place when we were setting it up and maybe we just didn't get all the lines out. And he left the lines open for a long period of time, so a lot of the fluid drained out of the system, so we may have not got all of the air pockets out, but still stops, just not as clean as it should. And those, uh, the pads and rotors are old, so it's not like we had to break them in, but it's sitting on the Buddy Club wheels. These are my old track wheels with the Nitto NTO ones. He's gonna use those for probably the next year. He'll probably at least a full season out of those. And it looks nice. We're gonna lower the car. We're not gonna do it right now. We kinda ran out of a little bit of time for the day. But we're gonna lower it a little bit more and even out all the corners and then take it to get a line. So it's essentially done for now. We're hoping for the next track event in about two weeks. So hopefully we'll be able to make it out there with this car. And so that'll conclude it for now, guys. We're hoping 
we can get this out the track, get some good footage of it, and get some clean, solid runs out there with no issues. Hopefully, uh, the engine can hold up for a little while longer. Now, we don't know the condition of the motor. It seems to be running fine, but this chassis, let me see. It has, I don't know if you guys can see it in there, is it focusing? It has 279,000 miles on it. We don't know if it's the original. It looks like the original engine, but it may or may not be. So we're hoping that it holds up, it takes a little bit of abuse at the track. And so that'll be it for today, guys. Hopefully you'll see us next time. We're gonna get it aligned. We'll try to get the footage of that, and then we'll get out there and try to get some track footage as well. We'll see you next time.